Hi, you guys. My name is Remy Harrington. A lot of people in the community know me as Miss Remy. So if you ever see me in the community, don't be afraid to give me a shout out and say hi. Um, I am here today to read to you a story about Mansa Musa out of this book called Black Heroes. And it's a compilation um, by Dr. Arlisha Norwood. Um, and she's compiled about 51 different stories um, of inspiring people from ancient Africa through modern day USA. So this is really exciting because we're in Black History Month. And she's compiled this book to teach us about our diaspora experience. And diaspora means journey. And so she has compiled these stories of some of the events um, and people that were significant and their an hour sojourn from the transit transatlantic slave trade through the transatlantic slave trade up through right now and so this is really cool and i'm very excited to be here before we get started um like i mentioned i will be reading to you about mansa musa and i love everything about a mansa musa because he was into wealth and i really am a strong supporter of wealth building generational wealth building and i'm really excited to read to you about him but before we get started um, I wanted to tell you that my role in the community is I am the director and organizer of the Zoo City Farm and Food Network. And what I do is I am developing and designing with my team a regional food system, which is super cool. And what we do here in Kalamazoo is that we have erected small farm sites in the city and neighborhoods. And so if you ever want to get any more information about that, holler at Miss Tia. Talk to Miss Tia. She knows how to get in touch with me. I've known her for a really long time. So here we go. Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa. His life was between 1280 and 1337 AD. Oh my goodness. Mansa Musa, and this is his image. So very cool, right? It's a very cool illustration. I like it. Mansa Musa was a prominent and wealthy ruler of Mali, a vast empire that once covered much of Western Africa. Mansa Musa was raised in a wealthy family of rulers. Research suggests that he was directly related to a founder of the Mali empire. Musa rose to power when the king went on a journey to explore the Atlantic Ocean and left Musa in charge. The king never returned. Musa became the ruler and was given the title Mansa, which means emperor. Mansa Musa increased the size of the empire by claiming victory over several other kingdoms, including the city of Timbuktu, which was already an important trading post. One of the world's first universities, the University of Sankore, was located in Timbuktu. After Musa made this, the city part of his empire, after, after Musa made the city part of his empire, he turned the university into one of the most important centers of learning, excuse me. At one point, Sankore was home to the largest library in the world. Like many other rulers, Mansa Musa was dedicated to building large places of worship and monuments. He was a devout Muslim and worked to spread his religion through his kingdom by building several magnificent mosques. Wow. Foreigners often visited Mali to admire the quality and style of the architecture. In 1324, Mansa Musa traveled to Mecca on a pilgrimage. He took nearly 60,000 men with him, as well as huge amounts of gold in order to trade and show off Mali's wealth. He gave away millions of dollars worth of gold on his journey. This caused problems for other kingdoms because they weren't prepared to be flooded with so much wealth. The traveling crew dressed in expensive silks. Naturally, Mansa Musa's travels caught the attention of many people. When he entered other empires, rulers made it a point to meet with him. Mansa Musa is recognized as one of Africa's most influential rulers. He was likely one of the wealthiest men in the world during his reign. Oh my goodness. He was so cool. There's a quote about him. This man flooded Cairo with his benefactions. He left no court emir nor holder of royal office without a gift, of, without the gift of a load of gold. Arab historian Ibn Fidel Ala al Umari speaking of Masa Musa's pilgrimage. Oh, there's so much to unpack there. 
let's just get into it. I am so excited to talk about this. Mansa Musa, first and foremost, can we just discuss the fact that he went and built all types of different relationships with people so that he could spread wealth? Oh my goodness. I love that. When I talk about loving wealth, I'm not talking about just loving money because we have to define wealth in lots of different ways. Wealth is health. Wealth is the environment. Wealth is our relationships with one another. Wealth is alignment with our spirit and our creator, right? In our spirit and with our creator. Wealth is so many different things. Wealth is a legacy. Wealth is a system that works and operates harmoniously. So when I think of what Mansa Musa did, when I talk about loving what he established and developed, it's because I am also trying to design systems that I can do myself and create within my own community and with my own family and then be able to pour that into other people so that we can build relationships that are positive and be, be diplomatic with one another because that's what he was. He was a diplomat. He built friendships with people that were rulers, right? With other influencers. Oh my goodness. He's just an amazing, amazing, amazing story. So, and it's real. This is a real story about a real man, right? So anyway, <laughs> I could go on and on about that. But again, if you ever want to do this type of wealth building work with us and what we're doing with the Zoo City Farm and Food Network, Again, you can look at our website at www.zoocityfood.com. Tell your moms and dads to get down to, get down with the get down, come and hang out with us. And um, again, happy Black History Month. I look forward to seeing you all. Thank you. Bye.